Good day, bushcraft survivors and preppers. Three videos ago, I put out a book, um, or rather a reference to a book, and people have come back to me and asked, can they have a peek inside? Now, yeah, I will. I'll do that for you now, because it is, The Lost Ways really goes back. I think it's a book that uh, everybody can get something out of. You will get something out of it. Uh, most of us will get a lot out of it. Um, I certainly have. So I purchased the book, digital version. To be honest, I wish I'd have bought the hardback, but I haven't. I've bought the digital. I'm not going to buy two. But uh, I've got it down below, and we'll go and have a look inside. I can't show you the whole thing, because it's someone else's product, guys. You know, I don't want to cheat him. I want to help someone who produces this sort of information. Uh, so hopefully you'll, you'll have a look at it. If you like it, buy it. You know, that way I'm doing him no harm, and or them no harm. I think it's probably a big organisation, boot company or whatever. But anyway, let's go and have a look. So let's go down below. Okay, here we are, and down below. Um, it's here on PDF format it comes in when you download it. So here it is, let's click on it and have a look. It stays on, you can copy this, you can make it whatever you want once you've got it. So, and you can, of course, if you've got enough ink, print it out. There's a lot of pages. Let's have a look again. <clears throat> the last lost ways. So let's have a look down. Um, as I say, I wish I'd have got it in book format. To be honest with you, I can't do anything with that. Let's get rid of that. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. Let's have a look down. What I'm going to do is scroll through. The Myriads. This book is dedicated to the pioneers who overcame the toughest times and built one of the greatest nations of all. I can't deny that. Although, little old Great Britain isn't too bad. We own two thirds of the world at one time, didn't we? <laughs> Special thanks to authors, and obviously, there we go M. Taylor, Three Saran, blah 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 blah. But let's get to the meat. Disclaimer, this book is designed only to provide information. This information is provided and sold with the knowledge that the publisher and the authors do not offer any legal or other professional advice. Anyway, and so on. So you get a disclaimer. <clears throat> which I think you've got to do under these circumstances because people do eat the wrong foods. <clears throat> Some products described as being going to comply with the FDA, USDA and FSIS regulations. So beware. But we're survivalists. We're not going to have them regulations of the SHTF. Uh, so we start with the table of contents, and that's a good place to go. So the disclaimer, and then we're making beer, basic recipes. Well, we can find them anywhere. Um, but it's useful have to have it all in one book that you can throw in your bug, bug out bag and get out. And that's the principle behind this book. One good book. I can't take a box. I can take a box of books, but I can't move about with a box of books. And I have a box of books. Probably got about two boxes of books. But anyway, I want it all in one that I can survive with. And this, to me, does it. And I haven't got through it yet, so I'm making a, a statement there. So, equipment ingredients for making beer, crate malted beer, making yeast, a word on hops and making beer. A bit on the stronger stuff, so make a still, an al alambic still, mm, a homemade still. And a schematic, schematic of a homemade still. I, I, I'm gonna have a look at that. Ginger beer making, the old fashioned way. The deadliest drink, drunken sailors, and beer gets boring. Spicing it up, easier brew, and then we go on to how North American Indians and early pioneers made pemmican. Well, that, by the way, the, if you click on the link I send or the link in the description you'll get that recipe as a video for free in case you haven't seen the last one I sent out watch the video he describes with all the details for free before you buy anything the pemmican recipe so <clears throat> um, rendering fats on so forth how much do I need 
So it's giving you quantities as available. One, as spycraft, multi correspondence during the 1700s and 1900s. Interesting. Rectal acorn. <laughs> I haven't read that yet. Uh, silver ball and quill letters, invisible ink, and mass letters. Um, that certainly could become useful in an economic collapse. Modern firearms. That's useful. Not so much for us in Britain, but definitely for you guys. Rather than ammunition, reloading components. Most of on USA guys know that primer pocket bullets, projectiles, the cast lead bullet. Cast of bullets, pretty straightforward, black powder primers, reloading equipment. As I say, this book goes on a long while. I don't know if you want, want me to keep going. How forefathers built their sawmills, grain mills and stamping mills. Right? How our ancestors made herbal poultice to heal their wounds. Stop this any time you want to read this. What our ancestors were foraging for and how to wild craft your table. Mm. Cleavers, dandelion, chicory, chicory, cocktails. There's photos, photos in there. Lots of photographs. Quite a good photograph, I find, to get you going. You know, um, I think once you've got the basis of food foraging, then we, unless you know um, Greek, which I do not, uh, Latin, which I do not, then we have to go by our eye, really. How our ancestors navigated. Well, most of us have seen that one, but it's useful to have the stars. And if you refer back to my other videos, you'll see navigation. There's some videos on navigation, letting the sun guide you, letting the moon guide you. If we're moving, as I say, my survival techniques, I'd like to plant myself in, hide and stay in the one area and live there. So, anyway, it's all good in the one place, boo. How to make knives, snowshoes, seen them on Ray Mears. Roundhouse, how to build a roundhouse, that's good. I haven't got that far in the book yet. Um, an ancestor's guide to root cellars, very good. Right space, job, climate, what to keep and where. Creating an ideal conditions, light and humidity, dirt floors, wet cloth and paper, standing water, blah, blah, blah. Storage ideas in the garden, storage and insulation, excellent for the prepper. Things that do and do not belong in your root cellar. Um, proper storage, good old fashioned cooking and on open flame, cast iron. Seasoning your cookery, never use dish soap, iron rusts, no fire. I'm going to go on a bit here guys, so roast on a spit, roast on a string, Dutch oven, recipes past and future, meat pies, wassel, apple pie, biscuits, Okay, useful to think about this. This is a one book, excuse me if I vape, this is a one book, bug out book in my opinion. That's what I'm formulating with it. So that's why I say I wish I bought the hard copy now because I'm not going to be able to bug out with a laptop. Well, you can, but the battery isn't going to last. Clean water, stock of water, basic recipes for soap. Make a wood ash, collecting fat, and you can see over here on the right. I've got a long way to go, but let's get this let's get this first bit out of the way, and, I, and then I'll find a recipe for you. Make soap with modern ingredients. How to make soap? Temporarily storing wood burning stove. Heating with wood, making traditional survival bark bread. Well, oh, I can't wait to see that one. 296. I'll come back to that. That's the one we'll have a look at. 296. It's all right, this bit won't go on much longer, guys. I just want you to, to have a look in. Finding land trails, how to set foot trap, underwater trails, tanning, how to build smokehouse, smoke fish, hot smoking, practical survival lessons, the Donner Party, story of the Donner Party. 
Yeah, that was that big fellow, oh, yeah. So there's a bit of history in there and some ideas. Stress leads to anger and volatility, age and gender play a huge role in survival. Small wounds equals death. How sheriffs from the frontiers defended their villages and towns, crime in the West, communications, organisation, duty of sheriffs, we're still on the sheriffs. And that's what's in the book. And a quick flick. So let's go and have a look at 296. Traditional and survival bark bread. There are people in the world so hungry that God cannot appear to them except in the form of bread. Hmm. Mahatma Gandhi. I guess I didn't see that in the Bible. One big east. Oh, the dead exist in the game of Valley. Expensive world's population. Hey, homemade yeast can be made through various. I've done a video on homemade yeast, by the way. So I'll go back and have a look at that. Winter wheat during the fall. Let's hide the plants. Making their own bread. People from the early ages only used to plant and harvest their own wheat. Mm -hmm. Go for seeds. Sourdough starter. So it's good on yeast. I mean, yeast is so important to us because we're how to make a tasty bread. So it's all about breads, which is staple if we can get the grain, grass seed. But it didn't start with that, did it? Two cups of flour, baking soda, making bark bread. What's that about? That's what I wanted to say. Famine bread. Bark bread is common forms of survival food. Many would ask if tree inner bark is really edible, and the answer to that is yes. Okay, there comes our bread. I'll do a vi I'll research this and do a video on this in the next two or three videos. Using the right part of the bark from the right species of tree, the edible part of the tree bark is the cambium layer, which is the next, not the outer layer, which lies right next to the tough inner wood. So you come back from the bit you carve. Safe bark and harvest from trees, the most common being pine trees. Well, I'll be frank, I didn't know that. So, <clears throat> and I don't know if you knew that, but ask yourself the question. I, if I had this in my bag, there's a lot of pine trees all over Britain. Harvested from trees, the most common being pine trees, slippery elm, black birch, yellow birch, red spruce, black spruce, balsam, fir and tamarack barks. I'm going to let you read this so you'll be able to do this. It's more easily removed from the tree trunk harvest in spring. Another reason why the best harvest in spring is because the vitamin content Highest then the time you should harvest the bread of our positive identification of the tree species. So you, you need to be quite good, particularly in narrow but vertical portions of the bark from the tree. Shave off the grey outer bark and the greenish middle layer of the bark to get down to the rubbery white or cream coloured inner layer. Be careful not to shave too deeply. See picture. So there's the picture. This is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to do this. I've got to make a loaf out of this. Oh, come on, guys. If you make a loaf out of this before me, send me, the, send me a video or, or, or do ping me. This is exciting. Cut and peel off the whitish rubbery inner. Dry the bark in the sun or rack flat rock, just like the image. You should take a day to dry the bark strips, but that's dependent on the weather, obviously, if you know that. So we're pulling that over a rack on a coke fire. This is interesting. You can eat the bark as soon as you've harvested it. You can also fry or boil it and make some bark snacks to make the bark into flour. You, you only need 
to dry it for a day and then pound it until it turns to powder. My oatmeal and wheat flour. You can have the bark flour when making your breakfast bread. Just how the greatest grandparents survived. But when they went through severe famine, bark bread was also something that was actually part of their diet. Even during the wars of the 20th century, bark was used in addition to nutrition to daily rations. I like that. You know, anyway, I can't give you the whole book. Um, I'm just giving you a taster. So anyway, let's go back up top. Anyway, that's it. Um, that's a snapshot of what goes on inside the book. So you, you know, it's a genuine advert then, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not calling anyone here. Uh, that's what it is. It is a good book. Um, I like what I see. I think you, you, you should like what you see. I think even Bear Grylls would get something out of that. Uh, so, but that's just, uh, as I say, you guys asked me to have a peek inside. I'll give you a little peek inside. Um, yeah, we could digitally send this to everyone, but I'm not going to do that. Although I might do, I might purchase one for my 2,000 subscriber. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. This is Pete on Survival signing out saying please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to comment boys, good or bad. I like you all. Mm -hmm.